live from Naivasha. This is only the second episode of Sidebar, an essential hour of television. My name is Larry Mitowo. My name is Wallace Kantai. In a very, very, very windy in Nakuru County. I feel yeah. like the roof is going to fall on us. There is a roof up here by there. Maybe it's blowing. Um, we'll survive for at least 45 minutes. But it's a credit to the Council of Governors that they took this empty space and put up this whole thing and it's working. And it's such a parking lot. So it's, it's a parking lot, yes. It's interesting stuff because we decided to come down to Naivasha. Remember last week we were in Nairobi. We decided to come down to Naivasha because all the governors are here. Mm -hmm. And what's the best thing? When Mohammed cannot come to the mountain, the mountain comes to Mohammed. The mountain comes to Mohammed. So, so. we are the mountains. <laughs> we have Mohammeds in front of us. We're very honored to have not one, not two, but three governors among us. Uh, Peter Munya is the chairman of the Council of Governors and governor of the great people of Meru. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thank You're you a very much. busy man, so we appreciate you've taken some time to speak to us. Thank you. We are happy to be here. Asante sana. The tune is called Sidebar. The, it's called Sidebar, but it's a bar with only juice. <laughs> <laughs> one day when we grow up. We are partaking of the same. <laughs> <laughs> he just arrived from Eldoret, the governor of the Great Pope House in Gishu, Jackson Mandago. Thank you so much for joining us. And Governor Mandago, you're worried about not having a tie. But you're a governor, you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> if you wear a t-shirt, you'll be fine. Yes. <laughs> Only journalists have to be smart on set. <laughs> and all the way from Taita Taveta, the deputy uh, chairperson of the Council of Governors, Governor John Mrutu. Thank you so much for joining us as well. Indeed, thank you. Thank you for hosting us and giving us opportunity to test uh, the sidebar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So far, so good, right? As you said, if the second edition, yes. well, we are happy to be part of the history. <laughs> You're the very first ever governor to be on the show. But we're coming to you right now in the middle of almost a national crisis. Day 94 of the doctor's strike. And the government, both the national government and you county governments, are playing hardball now with the, with the, I, with the doctors. Yes, I see uh, Isaac Kutu also arriving. Isaac Kutu is arriving. And, and, and we will, we'll, we'll, we'll have him on just, in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac Kutu will join us in a moment. But in the meantime, yes. Governor yes, Munya. Yes, we are, we are facing a very, very serious crisis uh, where doctors have been on strike for more than three months. And uh, even though you may not uh, hear, the ordinary people are really suffering. Mm -hmm. But the doctors people. said they're also suffering. That's why they well, went on strike. Well, That's why they've been on strike for 94 days. Well, I, I'm sure they also have challenges and they're also suffering uh, but here's, here's in a it. sense. But, uh, you know, we can't compare their suffering with the suffering of the people who are dying because they can't access medical care. The thing, Governor, that uh, doctors have said, and we've seen all these conversations going on online and uh, when you actually speak to people physically, yes. they say negotiations were on. The Council of Governors is one of the parties to this negotiation. They have felt that the Council of Governors has not dealt with the negotiations in good faith. So now you're suddenly seeing threats coming in. They were jailed a few weeks ago. Now the president and yourself have spoken and said, this, these people are not acting in grief. These things are over. We approached these negotiations in good faith. We went out of our way to have so many meetings with the doctors. And uh, we, even when we couldn't agree, we were uh, ready to have the negotiators who came in from different sectors, including the labor movement led by Atwoli, and the CEO doctors could not budge. But are so, you saying it's a doctors only? Because this thing has many parties. It's got national government, it's got the counties, which in the individual capacity, plus as a council of governors, it has got all these sort of parties. Are you saying it's only the doctors who are keeping this thing where it is? I think one is. Oh, absolutely. I'd like, to, I'd like to also say yes, something government. that really, these are the doctors, because um, if you look at what national government has done, the goodwill they have offered, the goodwill counties have offered. I mean, as we've moved so many steps to approach them, they have not moved an inch. What steps are these? Us in, uh, How would you say goodwill when you had them jailed? It's not as what, uh, Larry, it's not as <laughs> what them jailed. No, in fact, they were, that, the, the question of them being jailed has nothing to do with us and the negotiations. It is everything to do with contempt of court. In the and all of us as Kenyans, regardless of whether you are a doctor or a governor or not, you, you must keep to the law of this country. In the grand scheme of things, the way they see it is we're trying to negotiate with these people, but they're also using the legal process to the inconvenience us by sending them to jail, which made them heroes because a lot of people said, how can you be negotiating with them in good faith and at the same time making sure that they're held in contempt of court? But, uh, <laughs> if I may, uh, I may also cut in. Um, indeed, as you say, if you look at the bigger scheme of things, uh, these are public employees. Uh, I, and yes, they went to college uh, for six, seven years to learn medicine. Uh, and one of the things, by the way, that uh, I find a, a disconnect, at some point they seem to have forgotten that uh, the colleges and universities they went to uh, are actually public universities. 
Uh, and therefore, as they negotiate, as they clamor for, for better terms, they also need to understand that uh, the education they have, the skills they have, were obtained by taxpayers' money. And two, the employees uh, of the public service. And yes, they spent three, probably three more years at the university, and that is recognized uh, by SRC. When they did the job evaluations, even that was taken into account. But over and above that, I mean, just look at uh, the kind of offer that's been given. Yeah, easily from, uh, from a rise from 140,000 shillings for an intern to almost 200,000 shillings. Now, you know, I even if you factor in the fact that somebody has spent three additional years in the university and somebody else they were in, at the university together, that gap is actually substantial. And also, I think the other thing that is, has, not been, has not been played out properly in the public domain is that every, every, for every round of negotiation, uh, there has been some additional money that has been offered to the doctors. Yeah? But, but here's the thing, and, and this, this is where it sort of breaks down. Each of you has obviously a big um, hospital and a big uh, institution in your counties. You, Governor Madag, for instance, has more than referral hospitals. They have been saying it's not just about our salaries, not just about our terms of service. Is that when I go there as a doctor and I don't have the tools to be able to serve my patients, then these patients sometimes die because they can't get simple things like gloves, blood transfusions, needles for uh, injections, simple tests and things like that. And they have been saying, don't think about us and our salaries. Think about the fact that we have to work in very difficult circumstances. We watch patients die because we don't have the tools. Actually, actually, there is... Uh, to just allow me to say something on that. Please. Really, if, if doctors are sincere, mm -hmm. they would really say that with the advent of county governments mm -hmm. and the partnership of national government, there has never been a time in this country where health facilities have been equipped as compared to this time of devolution. You cannot claim that today in any basic, and, and we are not talking about big uh, hospitals, Wallace. Yes. I'm telling you of my local dispensary. There's no way you'll miss gloves in my local dispensary. But this is not you enough. That's not always across the board, though. You might have the MRI machines and all of these other major machines that have been brought in because of this uh, since 2013, yeah. but in the small things that they need to do everyday tasks, that's not always available. They are available. I, I, they are available. Oh, Wallace, Larry, if I, I, make, I would want to challenge you to if visit I make a point our facilities here. once the strike is over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just visit them. Man. You know, like, I, I, if, if you just want to govern Murutu, once the strike is over, yes. when will that be? Because now we have a threat by the head of state that says, if you don't go back to work, Sasa to Taumana. And he in fact said today that there's, there's no negotiations until they go back to work. We have seen, we have seen communication yeah. from no, uh, some governors. We have seen communication. Actually, Wallace, I would then what happens? I would not even yes. ask you to wait until the strike is over. Mm -hmm. I would even ask you to make a visit tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we are not saying to my county or to Meru or to Taita Raveda. Just make a visit to any one of the counties and check the kind of improvement. I mean, these doctors must appreciate that they, we picked up things from where they were. They were far sunk. There were not so much budgets for drugs in, uh, in all our facilities, but today we are saying we've made a serious improvement that doesn't warrant them to really go on strike. Governor Munya, what happens now that you're giving ultimatums? You're saying if they don't go back to work, you're not negotiating. The Kenyans that you say are suffering are the ones who are caught in the middle. Well, we've uh, negotiated until we've reached the end of the, the limit, and that's why we have said uh, choices have consequences. And Doctors have decided that they don't want to work. They want salaries that are unrealistic, that the public cannot be able to carry. We must find alternative arrangements to stop the suffering of the public. That's why we have embarked on disciplinary action on those who will not work, because the courts have already declared the strike illegal. What is the disciplinary action you've begun today? Already, I'm told, uh, some doctors have been uh, sacked in Kenyatta National Hospital, I think 14 of them. I'm told the other counties are also on the process of handing over dismissal letters to those who don't report to work. We are said by today, if you don't report to work, consider yourself no longer an employee of the county government or the national government. One quick on Governor Madog before you go to break. If this is the stand that uh, the governors have taken as an entity, we have very few doctors in this country. If we sack them one by one, 14 at a go and all this thing, what are we going to do? I've had suggestions that we import doctors from elsewhere, they come from Cuba, they cannot speak English, let alone uh, the mother tongue which of the people that are there. What happens? Is that uh, the solution that's going to be? Uh, of course, one of the things that we, 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 we admit is uh, uh, with the exit of some of these doctors, yes, service delivery is going to suffer in terms of healthcare. But uh, don't forget that also in the health sector, Wallace, we have clinical officers who have been doing the bulk of the work. 
That is why these doctors can afford to work in public institutions for two hours and roam around private hospitals for the next is 10 hours. Is that, you know, I've had that statement made about two hours, including by the president, and people are saying that's I'm not true. You, we have spoken to doctors who say they go for 14, ask 16 maybe, hours. Ask me because a national referral hospital sits in my county. Mm. And I will tell you today, and I can challenge you, Wallace, we can go to MTRH and, do, and look at the attendance before the strike. Look at the, look, look at the records of the patients who are attended. We doctors attended them. And if we could go to the four or so private hospitals in my county, you will find the same, same doctors have attended patients in the same day. All so right. what you do is come back to us. Uh, you're watching Sidebar Live coming to you from Naivasha in Nakuru County. Come back to us with your, doc uh, with your stories of doctors um, and how they serve you and whether they're on strike, whether they've been serving you well. But we're going and to whether a break they work now for two hours as well. And whether they work for two hours. Okay. Sidebar, uh, the hashtag is uh, hashtag Sidebar. You're on Sabia coming back after the break to speak to the governors here in Naivasha. Welcome back to Sidebar Live from Nevasha. We're sitting here with my colleague Wallace Kantai and we've got three governors, including the chairman of the Council of Governors. Yesterday you withdrew everything that had been, the progress that had been made was all swept away. When you take, took away the 600 million shilling risk allowance, the 50% pay rise, so we're back to where we were 94 days ago with the doctor strike. No, we, we, we didn't take away uh, the increments. What was taken away is just the back dating right. of the risk allowance from January to, to now. Because that was given on condition that they resume work yesterday, which they did not. So it's just that offer that was additional, that was withdrawn. But all the other emoluments that have been offered are still on the table for those who go back to work. At this point, though, there's no negotiation because the, the position from both the counties and the national government is they have to go back to work before you continue negotiations. So there are no talks going, going on. Absolutely no talks. If there are any talks, then they are not. They are informal talks because you know one of the things the government, both levels of government, are not involved in any talks things anymore. Had, one of the things I've heard, and there are no, there is no need for any negotiations any further because the offer is still there. If you go back to work, you won't get the offer. Indeed, one those of, who are working are going to start receiving their salaries. They, uh, you know, the additional uh, benefits. Uh, because there are doctors who are working. It's not every doctor who is on strike. By but the one way. of the things I've heard, Governor, in yes. UVO, the fellow <clears throat> governors are free to jump in. Yes. Is that the offer, the reason, part of the reason why the thing collapsed yesterday, yes. was that the doctors were told that they have to go back to work before they sign any piece of paper. And they will say, we have seen uh, lack of faith from government, lack of trust from government, so we want to sign the piece of paper first before we commit to going back to work. And they were told, no, you have to go in first before we put any signature to paper. When, when is the, you know, when staff are on strike, yes. if you look at the, the established processes, what you sign is a return to work formula. Yeah? And in the return to work formula, you agree the kind of negotiations that are going to take place, including time frames. That, that, that is a normal practice. Was that on the table? It has always been on the table. It has always been on the table. It has always been on the table. Yeah? Always. That, that this is going to be paid. Uh, we do the return to work formula. And after that, then we get time, you know, to go through, to go through uh, the CBA process. And if we may talk about the CBA process, by the way, that's what the court said, I think, in, in October, yeah, that you have three months to negotiate a reasonable uh, a, a CBA that, that can withstand a legal scrutiny. And a CBA, the, the CBA uh, is the starting point is an employer establishing, stating what it is that he wants to, uh, to be done, including conditions of work, including working hours. Uh, whether it's 8 hours per day, 40 hours per week, 160 hours per month. And depending on those conditions, the employee now says, for me to do all that for you, this is what I need to be paid. A CBA is not just the, the, the demands from the employee. Yeah? It also includes what it is that the, the employer wants done. So for the offer that has been on the table all along, including the sweetener that was offered by the president on Monday night, yeah, was basically to say, let's sign, sign a return to work formula, uh, and also in there, whatever has been agreed gets paid, but in the process as well, we agree on this pro process of uh, establishing what the employer wants done, what is it that the employee again is going to be paid, and, and that's what is going to be the CBA. You know the contradiction in all of these governors, and this is something at Lina, <coughs> Lina at Murag's pointed out on Twitter, if you say the hospitals are equipped, why and they have quality, why is it that you governors, your colleagues seek treatment abroad? Every Kenyan of means in this country well, does well, not go the, to the local hospitals. The, the real question, uh, even assuming they aren't, because we are not saying every equipment is available and everything else, how would a strike solve that? 
because equipping hospitals, all this thing is a long-term process. It's not something you resolve in a day. But the point so is when that you go for a strike, the point is that the governors don't trust the same system they're saying is what fine. Else? What because else? when they need to seek treatment, they go abroad. But, they go to South well, Africa. The they go question to is, if you go on strike. Does that equip the, 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 the hospitals? But I think, you go on strike no, for three no, months. But, but you're sidestepping the issue, which is, let, let me Governor Madagui, you, let me, said, let me, let me no, you said that uh, the hospitals have oh, come far. Yes. You know, they're in a That's state exactly where they have said. Yes. We've yes. not said mm -hmm. that we've equipped all these hospitals with all the facilities required. Are you what comfortable going said, to a public hospital? Yeah, I do go to MTRH. Mm -hmm. I've said from where we picked the health sector since devolution started, there is such a great improvement that you cannot compare. And yet, these are not doctors we employed after devolution. These guys have been around for all those years. They have never complained that uh, we don't have this equipment in these facilities. Why now? That's the argument. And so we are saying we've, we've made steps in, uh, in equipping the, these facilities. We've not reached the, the, the optimum. And of course, it's not that we don't want to do it. We, we, I mean, we don't have sufficient resources to do it. Government. Now, on the question yeah. of uh, people of means seeking um, treatment, treatment, treatment abroad, abroad, let me tell you, Larry, for your information. It's not only people of means. I can tell you from my county alone, the number of people we've taken to India. Why? That's a question, Governor Amanda. Number people, one, why are they let me tell you one of, one of the... Go exactly. Go to one of the things is, for some of the treatments, we don't have the equipment. For some of the treatment, we don't have the expertise. And if you look at the kind of treatments people are going to abroad, are basically on cancer issues. Why? Because we have less than 10 oncologists in this country. All right. We no, don't no. have facilities that can but, do but, intervention no, radiology what, what, in the country. What, what, what does Manda, what, I honestly don't believe that the doctors on strike because they care so much about the patients they that they it's want about the hospitals. They said the CBS yes. is just about the bottom pay. line is their pocket. But they've been very consistent in saying from day one. Well, the yeah, what else can they say? They want the public is, to buy their... That is just the... Are you calling them sincere? They are sincere. If it is absolutely sincere. They contribute as well. If you look at the health center, it's all about a referral, uh, a referral, referral arrangement. You have the, uh, the dispensary, you have the health center, you have the sub-county hospital level 4, you have level 5. And indeed, at each level, there are things that you're able to do and certain things that you're not able to do. Yeah? And, and I get to a point to Kenyatta, and uh, as, as, as he's saying, there are certain things that you're unable to do here. And it's not only governors that go abroad. I mean, there's very many Kenyans that get to a point and you talk to a doctor and they tell you, look, uh, there is nobody who has done this type of operation here. Do you have the means? And you have the means. They refer you to India. They refer you to South Africa. They refer you to, to the UK. But, you know, those, those are, are very, very few and, and very rare, rare cases. The majority, the majority of, uh, of, of cases of medical care and whatever, uh, if you look at from uh, the, health, the health centers, uh, the sub-county hospitals, the level fours, and some of the level fives, that accounts for 99.9% .9 of the health care that, that we provide in this country. All right. Yeah. Here, here's, a, here's an important question. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, go, well, Governor. I don't Wanda. agree with what the doctors are saying. Particularly when uh, people go, to, go abroad to seek for special treatment. Of recent past, I, I can't quite remember when, but there's a circular that came from KPDU saying we cannot allow foreign doctors to come and do operations in the country. You know, that would have saved us a lot of money for travel. Instead of taking the patient to India, if but the he, doctors if are willing to come, you know, because there could be the equipment, but there's the lack of the specialized I'm expertise. glad you're saying that because it brings you to another point. I remember back in 1994 when you had this big lecturer strike, and I know lecturers are nothing to do with you, but it's similar. When everything got intractable and they were told there's nothing that's going to move, most of them resigned and went to other countries, mostly to Southern Africa, Botswana, and all the rest. We lost a huge cohort of our best brains in uh, the universities. It took us very, very long to come back. If you're going this intractably as uh, the national county governments and all these doctors say, you know what, there's demand in the UK, there's demand in all these other countries, and they disappear, are you prepared to take that on you? Actually, Wallace, uh, I think this, this way as a country, we need to think broadly. Mm -hmm. The model we have of employing doctors in a hospital is not the only model that exists in the world. Yeah, you can have an arrangement where the doctor runs his clinic, he treats uh, patients, and at the end of the month, he brings me an invoice, I pay him. Have you made that offer? Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. This, I think, let's not, let's not get worried that, uh, you know, if there's doctors, they could, they, I mean, if, 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 for example, we disagree, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that is the no, end. No, if you already have disagreed. You've disagreed for yeah, yeah, let's, let's face it. That yes, yes, we have. We're we now have. stuck. We have. And, and that's what we're saying. Look, and also, if you look at, uh, you know, some of the language that they, they use, you know, they don't want to negotiate with uh, small people like governors. <laughs> so it gets to a point where you, we start saying, will these guys, even, even if they, get, they come back to work, 
who will they receive instructions from? What are going to From the president? <laughs> if, they can walk, if they can walk away from the president. From the well, president. I mean, how, 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 how do you manage And uh, Wallace, let me ask you. <laughs> yes. If, if they say they want to leave this country, huh. are they willing to refund the money we've spent on training them? Okay. Even the guys who are still interns. Yes. I mean, they are not even true with their, with their training. Uh, uh, Governor Muni is going to leave us after the break, so I need to get, get this through to you before you go, Governor. Yes. If you go ahead and dismiss those who have not gone back to work, yes. that's the majority of the 5,000. Yes. What happens? How will you meet that well, deficit? The, the, we are already working on contingency plans of employing doctors from outside. From where exactly? From Tanzania, from But these Cuba. guys come to Kenya to get treatment because their Tanzanian system is not as good well, as ours. Well, I mean, uh, then the, you bring the fact, those? The fact that they come for treatment in Kenya doesn't mean they don't have qualified doctors who can work in. So are you then going to do a brain drain from Tanzania to bring it to Kenya? No, absolutely not. We know we have excess doctors in Tanzania who are, some of them who are unemployed. We know we have a lot of doctors in Cuba who are unemployed. And other countries. Who speaks? And, and all, it's not all doctors well, on strike. Well, Let us also not forget that. Well, so it is your message it's, that it's not all Cuban doctors who, who speak only uh, Spanish. Spanish. Many of them have worked abroad. Actually, many are expatriate right. Cuban doctors. So your final uh, word before you leave us tonight, Governor Munya, is that the county governments are not going back to the negotiating table until the doctors go back to work. The negotiations broke down, and the government has made decision that we do contingency plans to save the health sector as we wait for our doctors to change their mind. All right, we're going to leave it there. Governor Munya has to go because he's, go he's hosting a dinner and he's been very kind to stay with us for this long. Governor Isaac Ruto is going to join us after the break. Governor Ruto and Governor Mandago are staying with us for the rest of the hour and into the 9 p.m. hour. Right now, though, we have to take a really quick break. Coming up next is the news highlights with Smriti and Mark. Welcome back to the last part of Sidebar right here live from Nevasha. Governor Isaac Ruto of the great county of Bomet is joining us. Governor Mruto and Governor Mandeg are still with us. And my colleague Wallace Kantai is staying with us. You want to take the first question for Governor uh, Isaac Ruto? <laughs> you know the question that everyone has asked uh, Governor Ruto? He wanted to get into politics, but he said no. We have to ask about the elastoplast on your nose. Yes. You're an elastoplast on your nose and you want to get it removed in South Africa. Right in the middle of the doctor strike, uh, that's a very good question to ask. Yes. Yes. Why? The elastoplast was not a problem. Even the injury where the anastoplast was, was not the issue. The issue was about the multiple fractures on my face, mm. which was uh, impossible to operate here at the Nairobi hospital. I was referred to four different hospitals in four different countries by the specialists at the Nairobi hospital. There were four, three professors, and they told me, you just go to the nearest, which is South Africa, because they told me that operation has to be done within seven days, my friend. So I had no option. And the doctor who took me to South Africa was the one who had a visa to South Africa. They and there was no local doctor who could do that operation? No, in a public doctors, hospital? The local doctors uh, are professors in, uh, what is it called, uh, maxillofacial... Um, Which is basically the bones of the face. Yes. Yeah, the bones of the face. He is the one who told me they cannot do that operation here. And that if they are to do it, it's a little bit risky. And that the best thing for me is to look for areas that are able to deal with the issue. So we went to South Africa, and I was taken by two doctors from Nairobi Hospital. They told me you can't travel alone, that the pressure in the plane could collapse you any minute. So uh, what the, the, the elastoplast you saw here, I insisted on putting it, the elastoplast. The doctors in Bomet were telling me they wanted to tie the whole face. But I was scared of uh, alighting at, uh, at Wilson Airport. Yeah with a face that you cannot see to make a picture. it could have caused pandemonium in uh, in my county and and other parts the so the best thing was for me i told them i will just survive up to the hospital reaching the, the hospital after doing the um, scan what is it called ct scan the mri, MRI. They, they they told me there are too many fractures it can only be done and these these fractures will only be operated through lasers from internal Okay, operation. the reason why that came up, Governor, is because the question we've been discussing with the other three governors who are here is you don't seem to trust the same system you're trying to tell the doctors on strike to go back to because when you have a problem, you go, every, every kind of means goes abroad. Now, we are not telling the doctors to go to hospital to be treated. We are telling them to go to hospital and make them better so that we don't have to run to South Africa. That's what they're saying is in the CBA. They want not just pay, but they want better services. They yes, want equipment. They want all of those me things. I'm in, in agreement with them. There's, there's but no, the only there's fellow, no there. no, there's, there's no dispute. There's no we are ready to there. provide that. Yeah. But they have got to recognize that there is a, a devolved system of health care and that they have actually been employed by the counties and that they need to talk to Murutu on issues in Taita Taveta and sort out. And we have no problem with giving them... Uh, 
fair pay. I don't think there is any problem as long as the economy can afford. You know, we only have a very few minutes left, and there's a lot of politics to discuss. So, I'll ask one last, perhaps, question yeah. to you, yeah. Governor Mbutu. Yeah. But before you get there, yes, please. I want to tell you that there is no strike in Bomet. Is, it, is it because you threatened them? Has disputed I don't that. threaten them. Yeah. KMPDU has disputed that. They said there are strikes in Bomet. Yes. They Where? said they have the members who are on strike in Bomet. Where and who are they? Well, how come there no, there's no strike in Bomet, as you say? There's no strike in Bomet. We what? are just going on as usual. Well, how, what did you do? Huh? What did you do that these other governors have done? They joined us in 2013, and uh, we discussed <coughs> with the doctors when they have problems. Those who have had uh, problems on promotions, we've given them the requisite promotions. No, no one is saying he has not been given uh, allowances uh, for any period. So we deal with it as it arises. They, they tell us their issues, and it's easy. They just walk over. To the CEC help and they get in touch with finance and ourselves we agree on what to do one quick and one. no one would stick in one job group for more than two three years they should move up we acknowledge also that the doctors uh, the doctors have uh, no other business they don't run matatus like us we run matatus but a doctor goes to hospital and stays there he's even called at night so we all recognize that the doctors have a very special role to, to, to help us. One quick one, uh, Governor Mruto, before yeah. you get into the political questions. The people that you're saying are being paid for from public means and that's why they should have a certain level of uh, sense of service to Kenyans. Some of them are saying we paid for ourselves. I actually went, took a loan and went and paid for my medical education. So why should you then be putting me in that same category? Well, it's, 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 it's good and, it's, and certainly the, I think whoever made that point is, is not the only one who has paid for the university education. But uh, by the way, by the time they were paying, the structures were already in place. Yeah, the hospitals are already there, the lecture rooms are already there, and those were built by public money. And, and certainly the cost that you pay for your education <coughs> is not the full cost of reimbursing yeah, for, for, the, for, for the construction of the facilities and everything that is there. So I think that, that that's a complete disconnect. The fact that you paid does not mean that you paid for the full cost, your own contri contribution yeah, of putting up that cost. university. It's, 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 it's small beer. Yeah? Yeah. If, if there was no that initial investment, you would have stayed with your money without a university. So, yeah. So now into politics. We're in the yes. great, um, well, it used to be a province, now it's no longer a province, and I used to like provinces, Rift Valley. Yes. The most amazing level of politics there is. You're sitting on this side, Governor Amanda, you're sitting on that side. We suspect you people are on opposite side of the political divide. We're not sure where you lie. There's this huge disconnect about Those Rift Valley politics. Rate. Governor what, Isaac Rudy. He said what, to be in a roundabout. Where That's are you right had. now? Why, why are, are you, you suspect? Are you, are you in Jubilee? Why, why do you are you suspect? in NASA? I am not in Jubilee. Governor Amanda goes in roundabout. I'm roundabout. Yes, Unazumuka too. I'm showing an indicator to go left. Where is left? And left is where? Left. Where is left? Left is obviously left. I'm not going to the right. <laughs> I did. I did a hold on. I did a, I did a translator for this. Governor Mbutu, where is left? Where is left in the case of uh, it, Governor? It, it depends on which direction we are facing. Where I'm sitting, left is this direction. <laughs> so left is <laughs> Jubilee. Left is that side. But but him sitting there. Uh, his left is he left and your left are not the same thing. Yeah, his first his left his left is away. Maybe you're going to side. Yeah. Are you simply? Playing that game to be a spoiler and to take yourself no. to the highest bidder no. when it gets I, close I, to I'm not doing no. that. There are issues I've put on the table. Uh, right now, there are seriously falling household incomes. Mm -hmm. Our people are unable to pay school fees. Vijana wana cars. And Jubilee is telling us about the Grand Railways. We are talking about jobs, my friend. We are talking about food. Wale tuambia wametenga pesa, sasa wametenga hata ugali. Governor Mbanda, this is direct. Akuna ugali, it's directed at you. I, I have a right of reply. Yes, it's directed it. at uh, directed at you. Yes. Number one, when it comes to an issue of unemployment, it's not an issue that the Jubilee uh, administration has created. Um, when it comes to issues. It's supposed of, uh, to solve. Yeah, we are supposed to solve. Yes. And not just Jubilee. Even you in the county government of Bomet is supposed to also solve. I have tried. It is our responsibility as leaders in Kenya to make sure that we have a growing economy that will resolve the issue of unemployment. Now, Number two, um, mm -hmm. I would want to differ with uh, Governor Isaac. When he says we are telling them about the railway, I think he doesn't understand how many Kenyans were directly employed. As casual laborers? As casual laborers. And some, more than about 300 have been taken to China actually for training, mm -hmm. for permanent and pension of employment. Let me tell uh, you. Number two. Number three. Number three, Governor Ruto here is not telling us that uh, he needs his tea to be transported from Bomet to Mombasa at a cheaper cost so that farmers can get more returns. I don't know why he's telling us that we are constructing a really that is not going to help him. 
this railway and is only want, going to bring want goods to know from China. Is, even before he tells us, mm -hmm. I would want to know these three issues he has put on the table mm -hmm. so that we can answer him. Maybe that's why he's still at the roundabout because and he has not an answer. As, a spectator. <laughs> as quietly as possible. <laughs> You're keeping out of this argument. <laughs> no. Surely I must be part of it. Yes. If the issue, I mean, certainly I can talk about uh, our region mm -hmm. uh, and the coast region. Um, and, and, and for us, if you look at... Uh, there have been defections in the coast region. People are... Defections are counter defections. Well, I mean, there are stories, there are stories that, uh, you know, some people moved because they were given a lift in a chopper. Uh, yes. Now, I don't yes. know how many people can carry in a chopper to, yes. to, to defect with. But uh, if, if an individual gets a lift in a chopper and defects... And maybe some Ugali. And some... Yeah, I mean... Do you know what worries me when you speak like that, governors, is yes. how cheap our politics is. Yeah. If you're going to be a governor, you're going to be an MC, you're going to be a senator, MP, no. even but, president, but, and a helicopter ride, a bit of Ugali, but, but, moves but, you one way or the but, other. But, but, is that how cheap we are? But Wallace, those are not my words. You know, a leader stood up in public and said, you know, a, a, a chopper was sent to his house. Nilibebo na helicopter ni kabadlisha. Kutoka Nairobi, mpaka Nairobi, kutoka Taita, mpaka Nairobi, akachukuliwa tata kutoka nyumbani, eh, mpaka kwa public rally, you know, and therefore... And that was enough. And that was enough. It was no, said no, in public. That, that is not true, Wallace. My friend, let's not... Governor Mandago, says it happens. Mandago, I don't... I, 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 that, that, that one is something that was said publicly in my, my county by a leader. Yeah? Uh, I, I mean, and, and, yeah. Those, and those are not my words. Back to the economics yes. of the railways. You see, the, the colonialists build a railway to transport goods from Kenya for export. This particular railway is to bring goods from China, Chinese products, to Kenya and take nothing to China. Now, let me also tell Mandako that I if you, to if you pay, be, before, before let me just there. finish. If you pay 400 billion to China, you have actually exported thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs. It is immaterial who else you, you, you take to China to go and understand how to turn a spare. The fact that you have actually paid out from Kenya 400 billion is a very serious me, export. Me, me, it's very serious it. hemorrhage. Let, and let, and let, let me, me tell you, you have currently a company, our tea, no, 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 Isaac, you our tea is being taken let me, let me by the you, lorries, let me ask you one by the drivers. Yes, Governor you, have, you have a company in Bomet that can do a standard gay railway. Huh? We have a company in Bomet that can do a standard gauge railway. In Bomet, we don't need a standard gauge railway. We it's need not about Bomet. Yeah, Bora Bora, but but you are asking me about Bomet. I'm asking you about no, the company that we can have do got a standard gauge railway for Bomet. Kenya. And we have got Matatu drivers. And we have got lorry drivers. Reason, we want these ones to transport our goods, my friend. The reason why we paid... Uh, what do you want to transport from Eldoret to, to they Mombasa? Because the capacity to do the standard No, gauge but tell Hold on. What would you have done differently if you had not built a standard gauge really for 500, 600 billion shillings? For 500, 600 million, billion shillings. Yes. First of all, you invest in local infrastructure for people to get to market. What kind of infrastructure? Uh, for example, ensure that the roads, first of all, are built machinani that people are able to move and sell their products. What we need to do is to stimulate economic activities in the vast areas of Kenya and deliver income to the households. Currently, the households in Kenya are unable to pay fees, they are unable to eat, Wallace. they are unable to, to meet medical, medical bills. Now, right me now, ask, it is all around. Let me ask you, Governor. We, we have got no jobs for you the youth, us, even when we are finished to invest on the infrastructure. And that's what we are doing. Do you know how much <laughs> money we've put on roads in this country? Uh, it's almost one, one trillion. Uh, it's half of what we have put in the railway. Uh -huh. you, half? Yes, of course. You are, you are, I think your problem is you have right. just no, shut no, no, your eyes <laughs> to what we I are want doing. To, I, I, want to I move. wish I had time to explain to you. I want to move <laughs> this conversation away from that just for the moment and ask, you, you, you both have said over the couple of days you've been here at the Devolution Summit that devolution is working. But what has come out also over the past couple of years, since 2013, is the accountability problems in many of the counties. For instance, the Auditor General in Taita Taveta said there were 652 million shillings that they were not quite clear about. Why do these cases keep coming up? What happened in your case to 652 million shillings that the Auditor General queried? Well, I mean, if you ask me for the details now, I, uh, I, can't, uh, I can't give you. Uh, but sometimes if you look at the queries that uh, are raised by the Auditor General, he has not said that the money is Good missing. Yeah. yeah, He has said, I mean, I can tell you, for example, there's a time I went to the Senate uh, and we had bought uh, graders, we had bought uh, tractors, and, and they said they didn't see the logbooks. And, and for them, that's an issue. And for them, for part of the frustration is, how, how is it that you can send auditors for a whole month and they're in the county <coughs> and they cannot even take the effort and say, okay, even if I don't see the logbooks, can you go and show me where these graders but are? But isn't that a normal audit function? You've worked in the private sector. It's yes, a normal audit thing that if you yes. say, 
you have bought this equipment. Yes. Part of the proof is this. Motor vehicles tend to be logbooks. Yes. So you know that. Yes. So why didn't you expect that question to come up? Well, and, and those things eventually, were they, they were there and, and they were shown. Yes. Yeah? Usually auditors sometimes also come for two weeks and they are in a hurry. They are overwhelmed. They send five auditors to come and audit uh, ten ministries. And they just sample, they sample, they sample, they sample. And there are some things they don't get instantly. And, you know, but and but finally, they, they get it. And also, what is this issue of the Auditor General? You know, there's a presumption that uh, the, uh, the Auditor General's office has the capacity, has always had the capacity to audit all these county governments that came into existence in 2013. The reality is that they're also struggling. Because previously, they just used to audit one government, one national government, and its parastatals. Now, all of a sudden, they, they have to audit the national government for seven units. For seven units. Well. And every time they come, they're also in a hurry. They're and in a hurry uh, to go into another county and another county and another county. And then we so, are without the yeah, so, so, if in the process, obvious things that they're, they can close out very quickly you know, are, not, are not closed out because they're in a hurry to go into another county. But then, to, then, to be fair to the Auditor General, I think since then, their capacity has, has been growing every year. Yeah? And it's going to go to a point where there is sufficient people and those kind of questions, if, 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 if there are, yeah, they're, they're able to deal with them and solve them up before they become sensational. Because all of a sudden now, everything the Ultra General touches, it just becomes sensational. Oh, this is missing, this is missing. And, and then you can understand why, because the, in, in a country with a reputation like ours for corruption, when a query is raised, the, people imagine the worst. Larry? For me, I would say, um, personally as a governor for Singishu, I don't have a problem with uh, questions from the Auditor General. For as long as when I get back to my officers and ask every accounting officer in every department that this question was asked, you never answered, where are the documents? Okay. They'll have to follow up and make sure they get the documents. Mm -hmm. When they don't get the documents, action is taken on them. You and let me tell you, Larry, that, um, and that is why, even today, the Auditor General is having a petition in Parliament. Why? It had to do with a, a procurement of a software for doing audit. Probably by the time the other auditors were going to audit that department in the auditor's general office, maybe all the documentation was not there. That does not mean that you know the Lose. money, the money, the money Lose. disappeared. The only time that uh, uh, you will say that money was misappropriated is once you've been given uh, the auditor general's questions, you've not answered all of them. Okay. It has now been proved beyond reasonable doubt that you are not able to account for the volume funds. Then that's the time we say money has been lost. Gentlemen, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for coming on board, all, all of you, Governor Isaac Ruto, Governor Jackson Mandago, and Governor John Ruto. And uh, uh, thanks Munya to also yes, Governor John Munya, uh, to Peter Munya, who had to leave because he's, got a, he's a busy man. He's hosting the Devolution Summit here. We're going to leave it there on side, but thank you so much for watching. We So much feedback, we couldn't get through all of them. Wallace, what do you want to say? Um, next week, please make sure, 8 o'clock you will be with us. We'll be somewhere in a county, this country, or this great country of Kenya. <laughs> Bring us up at 8 o'clock every Wednesday. Thank awesome. you very much, Governors. See you then. Excellent. We're going to come back to complete with this gentleman at 9 p.m. Right now, though, we're going straight to NTV Tonight.